Is TypeScript worth learning? Before we answer that, let's understand some background. I am coming from Java background. For a quite lot of years, I worked on Java developing software where I had to be type aware. It means if I had to declare a string, I had to declare it with the type string explicitly. After developing software products for eight plus years in Java, when I shifted to JavaScript, oh man, I felt it like a fresh breath of air. You can't believe it, the freedom that I got. I don't have to declare a type. I don't have to worry about maintaining those types, thinking about the types, so less code. I felt it like the paradise of freedom to build test and ship my code as fast as possible. Then, after four years of enjoyable time with JavaScript and growing as a senior software developer, I was introduced to TypeScript. Hence, here is my opportunity to tell you the real fact. Is TypeScript really worth learning? Keep watching. I won't lie. Starting with TypeScript was a real bummer. It was shocking and nightmare. You know why? These are the reasons. The first thing was setting up the tools, build system and everything. When I started with JavaScript, it was as easy as open up your browser, go to DevTools, go to the console tab and start practicing your JavaScript because that's the default language of the browser. Browser understand JavaScript. But whereas if I have a TypeScript code snippet from a tutorial or from a video, I want to try it out. I cannot try it out directly on the browser. That was really, really a bummer in the beginning and was a fact that was stopping me to go for that for TypeScript. And then you realize you need additional tools. You need additional build tools just to write a hello world programming TypeScript. Are you kidding? Then I figured out there is something called TypeScript compiler, TSC. Now the TypeScript compiler takes TypeScript as an input and then makes JavaScript as the output. So finally we are having JavaScript itself. Then why not to write JavaScript directly? After understanding the compiler a bit, I got into a configuration file called tsconfig.json. And that's when as a developer, I got the shock of century that this is something I cannot deal with. This tsconfig.json was giving me error which was like very very difficult for me to even understand that what exactly trying to say. I understood that the TypeScript projects need an explicit file called tsconfig.json so that it works in that environment. The great thing about that that it works great if everything is configured correctly. As a newbie, you just wonder why this file throw such errors which you don't even understand. And the last setback about TypeScript was the fact or the notion of it slowing me down. I have to declare types. I have to first understand and think about the types. Then I have to maintain those types in my code somewhere. So it means it's an extra code. It's an extra code to maintain. It's an extra work to do. And somewhere, am I not overcomplicating the simple patterns of JavaScript with TypeScripts? So these were the initial setbacks, the bombers that I had to deal with. After a few days with TypeScript, my perspective started to change. It happened only because I didn't give up in those initial days of struggle. I started understanding that TypeScript is just the superset of JavaScript. So it means you have all the features of JavaScript in TypeScript, plus there are something called a type safety. We'll get to it in a bit. Now, as a JavaScript developer, if I am starting to learn TypeScript, I have to really go through a shorter learning curve because I know JavaScript. Now I have to know about the type safety and I have to just deal with it. But if I don't know JavaScript, I don't know the Node ecosystem, then it might take a little bit more for me to learn TypeScript. Now, if I don't know anything, I'm starting with scratch, I have to go to the path of learning JavaScript, which itself is stiff and it's a long journey. As we know, why not TypeScript to start with? Those are the thoughts that started coming in my mind. I also realized the initial setback I had with the tooling system, the building system. Those are like one time job. It means that you understand how to get it done once and then you replicate or reuse for any of your future projects and TypeScript being in the market for a while, those things are quite well proven. It means somebody somewhere have already done the tooling system, the building system for you. So if you get a hold on that project, you can very well use that in your project as well. So 
that particular struggle was also started to diminish. After that, I started realizing the power of VS Code, it supports for TypeScripts and the IntelliSense. It is just mind blowing. So before you even think about like what it is going to be when you are declaring an interface or a particular type in TypeScript, the VS Code is going to prompt you and tell you like this is probably what it is going to be. That's what made things a little bit easier when I was thinking through the types and trying to play around with types. It seems the initial bummer was settling down. How about the TS config file then? Yeah, of course, there are a lot of configurations possible in the TS config file and you have to really, really deal with it hard. But the positive part is you don't need to know about all the configuration options in the TS config file. You can start with something very minimal that's required for your project and then can learn it incrementally. The word incrementally is very important over here. And that's why in the upcoming videos, you will learn how and where the TS config file is very important and how to configure it and how to learn it incrementally. Stay tuned to it and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss out of those videos. I spent about four to five days with TS config file, not like in a stretch, but in between my work and try to figure out like what each of these configuration options doing. And if I don't really have to bother about certain configuration options, can I really do that? With that, I have certain mind map and I have certain learning behind it. That's what I'm going to share with you very, very soon. After the initial struggle of tooling, building and configuration, now you will be itching to write your first program in TypeScript. In JavaScript, a simple sum of two numbers look like this, a function which takes two arguments A and B and return the summation of that. And you can execute this function as many times you want just passing the relevant argument. So there is no rocket science. You may be feeling that now writing the same thing in TypeScript, I have to define something additional. Come on, I have to tell the first argument is a number, second argument is a number and what you are producing by adding them up is also a number and it is going to produce exactly the same output. But this was helpful, you know. The ABAP2 console statement works perfectly fine. 1 plus 2 is 3, 1 minus 1 is 0. But in JavaScript, you also have all the opportunities to pass arguments like this. You can pass a boolean and then you try to sum a boolean with a number. You can pass an empty array and then try to sum up a number and an empty array and that's going to put out the output very very handsomely because javascript try to implicitly coerce its data type and do type casting to a best possible type that it thinks is supposed to work now that way sometime you may find an output which is completely ambiguous so you may not have control sometime on the input to a function but due to that lack of control you cannot generate an output which is really really not desirable the same thing if we try in typescript i will straight away get error if i mouse over i can see the argument of type boolean is not assignable to the parameter of type number that's what the type checking means and this is where the typescript is everything about javascript plus the type safety because you are putting a type guard up front in the compilation time when you're writing the code not at the production time similarly to the below statement is it actually says the argument type of never array don't worry about the never over here because we'll be covering that in our upcoming videos is not assignable to the parameter of type number it is like safeguarded for you and you won't be executing something very wrongfully where you don't have control on the arguments and their types of a function let's take another example let's take an array of employees this array contains each of the employee object that has an id name age and whether the employee is married or not please put your focus on the type of data each of these attributes are dealing with here age is a number id and name are string married is a boolean that's what we're indicating in plain javascript now if i have a task of find out the married employees from this array what am i going to do it's a very straightforward option using a filter method so if i filter i will find the married employee and that's clara because for clara alone the married is true for everybody else the married is false now let's say somehow from your server or due to some mistake the value of married is not true or false is changed to something else now if you notice the same employees array but in this case the bob the employee 
the married value is become 3. It was supposed to be true or false, but due to some mistake, it happened. Now, if I run the same filter function on top of this to find out who are the married employees, I am now finding both Bob and Clara being married. But it is never ever indicating directly that Bob is married. It is due to a mistake. That is where you are finding both Bob and Clara as married. Now, the next thing as a JavaScript developer, what you and me are going to do is we are going to put some extra logic into this filter function. We can do something like this, isn't it? We can tell that I am picking out each of the employee from this employees array and checking whether the married attribute is a Boolean value or not. Only in that case, I am actually returning the employee. Otherwise, I am telling this employee.married type is not correct. Now, if I run the same thing on this particular employees object where Bob married information is not correct, is not a boolean, is going to throw me an error. It's going to tell that uncaught error, the employee.married type is not boolean, which is fair. Now, if I go back to the earlier array where everything was fine, like Bob's marital status was false. And here, I'll be writing my extra filter logic that I have given. Now, it should give me again, Clara is the only person who is married. So this logic is working perfectly. As a JavaScript developer, I am doing this. But hang on, isn't that extra code? Isn't that extra hour of work? Isn't that extra brain power and maintenance? Isn't it overcomplicating some of the simple pattern of JavaScript? That's what we actually communicated are the problems with TypeScript. Believe me, there are more to it. So the verdict time. Is TypeScript really worth or not? If you are coming to this section of the video after watching the previous sections of this video, I think it will make sense to you. But if you're coming here directly, you have all the chances to make and match your decisions. One true fact is you will not like TypeScript just by looking at it, just by understanding what it promises and definitely not by reading somebody else code which is written in TypeScript. It might even scare you. To like TypeScript or to know the true power of it, you have to start using TypeScript. This is the best way that I can tell because there are a lot of opinions around. There are a lot of people making others biased or unbiased telling about TypeScript. And if you are a developer just listening to that and making your opinion on it, or you are reading things on Reddit or somewhere and making your opinion on it, I think that's the mistake that you'll be doing. You have to get with TypeScript to put your judgment about it. And there are a few other factors as well. The tooling, build, setup, time taken for this are all damn excuses in my opinion. It really doesn't take that much of time to understand the tooling and the build system because if you are a developer, you have the mindset of setting up things. How long you think is longer for you? Is couple of hours really longer for you? And if it is for something that once you get it done, you can reuse for multiple projects, I don't think it is longer. So if that's not the case, you can always spend a couple of hours just mimicking that something else have done as your build setup, tool setup for the TypeScript project and start using the same thing. Even if you don't understand those things very deeply, you understand that it's a little bit higher level. It is enough for you to get started. As you progress, you will figure out the things. For JavaScript developers, it is always very, very difficult to accept TypeScript unless otherwise they have work really, really deeply with JavaScript. Taking my example, I can tell you that if you have not worked on JavaScript so deeply and you have not developed products or application with a moderate amount of team members, you really won't comprehend or appreciate what TypeScript might provide to you. You will always feel like whatever you have with JavaScript is quite enough and bringing TypeScript is going to make more hindrance. But that's not the case. When the project is really growing, when you have multiple team members in your team and you want to really structure the project correctly where the debugging, the clean code, the structure of the code, everything matters to you, you would prefer TypeScript. Now the question is, is it worth? Absolutely yes. If your project is beyond a simple app like a to-do app, if you want to catch the type errors and the mistakes at the compile time, it's when people are writing the code, not when it is in the production. Your project is being developed by a moderate amount of team members and you need kind of collaboration with them in a type safety manner, you need TypeScript. You want to debug your code efficiently. You are looking for a common data structure interface between client and server to exchange data. 
TypeScript gets you that. That's one of the problem that many of the web developers faces today, like what server is sending versus what client is getting. There is nobody in between to tie that contract together. TypeScript does it really, really well. Last but not the least, you don't want to miss out on the job opportunities that are on TypeScript. Now here, let me tell you, if you are a web developer who is working on JavaScript, coming to TypeScript, the learning curve is very, very small. You can actually get started with TypeScript pretty easily. That's the reason I'm focusing on this playlist on TypeScript where I can break down each of the problem very, very small way for you and can teach you in a beginner friendly way with lots of projects and the underlying concepts so that you don't miss out all those job opportunities if you just don't know TypeScript. So if you know JavaScript somewhat, you have to also know TypeScript hand in hand so that you can grab on those opportunities as well. I want to end this video with this big man's quote, which says, learning is an experience. Everything else is just information. Is something worth learning, including TypeScript? The answer depends on why, why you should learn than what you should learn. We all will have limitations on how many things we can learn in our lifetime. So learn wisely. If you are a JavaScript developer, you can learn TypeScript very, very easily. So make it as a stronger point for you, not a biased opinion. I'll see you again with this playlist, with the next video where I'll teach you how to get started with your first TypeScript application. Lastly, I would like to thank you for all your support so far. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, don't forget to subscribe because you don't want to miss out on the content that I'm creating. Also, please like this video if it was helpful to you. I'll be back again. Stay well. Keep learning.